Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco, continuing on our attempt to do one of these a day during the pandemic. Uh, pandemic projects being what they are to keep us entertained, but also keep us safe and uh, busy uh, while we struggle through all of these issues regarding the, the virus and trying to stay safe. And a uh, special shout out to all of those that are involved in trying to keep us that way. The first responders, law enforcement, the medical professions, essential personnel. Thank you for everything it is that you're doing. We really do appreciate it. So we're going to work today on how to replace the anti-reverse dog in a 4400 uh, spin fisher. This is the 4400 SS. Now I've already rebuilt this reel. Uh, and I've left some of the pieces just kind of hanging because Tom sent me the reel and Tom said the anti-reverse isn't working and sure enough when I opened the reel up the uh, the dog is worn that's the cause of the problem so in order to replace the anti-reverse dog you pretty much have to take the reel apart anyway so I thought I would just reassemble this thing and show you how it comes apart show you how to replace that dog and then uh, if you're tuning it up, I'll point out along the way how to tune it up. I'm going to start by removing the exterior pieces. <clears throat> In this case, I'm going to take the handle off. I'm also going to take the spool off. We have to remove the rotor in order to get to the anti-reverse dog. In order to remove the rotor, you got to remove the main axle shaft. In order to remove the main axle shaft, you got to take the side plate off to get there. So it's really essentially what you would do if you were going to tune up the reel completely but I've already done that and I was just waiting for the part which I got from mysticparts.com and uh, we're, uh, we're able now to complete this repair and get this reel back out fishing again so there's three side plate screws I know from experience that those side plate screws are all the same so I'm not laying them down on my desk rather I'm putting them into my parts tray I recommend that everybody have a parts tray. In this case, it's just the bottom of a milk jug, but uh, it certainly serves me well. We have a side plate, we have the bearing, we have the main gear, and uh, if we can move this along here, I want to show you how to get this uh, work done here. So first thing you want to do is remove the two screws from the block here. That little hold fast plate is going to enable us to remove the axle. I'm just going to put these two screws on the bottom of the deck here for a moment. Then I'm going to put them into my parts tray. After you take those two off, there's that plate that holds the axle shaft to the crosswind block that comes off and then next up the axle shaft can be removed by pulling up and out on that and again so if you have any questions about this you would go to a schematic diagram of the reel and that would show you how the pieces and parts come out all right this is kind of uh, the way I got to get to the the um, anti-reverse dog there's a lot going on here. So one of the things that you want to know about the spin fisher is that you cannot pull the main gear at this point because the override, the anti-reverse override does interconnect and stop that main gear from coming out. If you want to tune up your reel, what you need to do is you need to remove this shaft first. You can't pull this out like you can on most um, reels when uh, when you remove that axle shaft. This one is also in the way. The way that you do that, and I'm not going to do it for here because we're just going to focus on replacing this. The way that you would do it here is you would remove the bottom arm, push this up. That's going to push the, the spring up, and then you would need to re remove that and then come back and reset all of this afterwards. You can see here how the arm is damaged on the uh, anti-reverse here. The new one will show you 
that there's a much longer extension there. So over time this is worn off. But you'll see that this versus that is another, geez, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so on the tip there that's worn off of this one, and that's why this one does not work. Okay, we're going to remove the E-clip that holds that on. I just hold one side of it and use a, a pin, or you can use a flat-bladed screwdriver, or you can use something else that uh, will enable you to make that clip, bring that clip off. And then what you're going to find is we need to loosen but not remove the gear assembly tie downs. So to do that I like to get this I get that dog out of the way back that up a couple of turns back this one up a couple of turns pull up so that you can clear this shoulder here we're not quite clear And once you clear that shoulder, then you can remove the anti-reverse dog. And you can see right away, if I put these two side to side, how much longer the leg is on the one than the other. And that's why this one was failing. So I don't know what broke this off, or if it was just general wear and tear, but that's the cause of Tom's problem. And that's why we're going to replace it with a new piece. To reinstall then, simply align it so that the prong of the anti-reverse dog is going to mesh with the cutout in the gear. If you try and put it in this way, it's not going to work. So make sure it's going in the right direction. Pull up on that whole assembly so again that you can clear the uh, shoulder here. And notice that you have two prongs now on the back of this. You have uh, basically a fork, one on each side of that metal bar. Those got to get separated to ride on this gear here. So we'll just uh, go ahead and put that on. And then just rotate it so that you can come over the, the, the carrier right there. And then we're just going to work. This is properly set now and you can see that that prong is now on the metal part of the click ratchet here or the anti-reverse ratchet as opposed to this one which was falling short. So now it's kind of weird tolerances here and sometimes you're actually better off just using a small micro screwdriver to clear the tip here but now you want to tighten down on the collar that holds the pinion gear in place. And now, when you spin your spin your gear as you're uh, reeling, you'll see that this backs off and it, it rests against the shoulder. And then as soon as you go to back it off, you can see how it pulls in. So that's how this anti-reverse system is set to work. Forward, it backs off, and that friction tooth is going to drop it right in to uh, work when, it, uh, when it's set down. All right, I'm just going to grab my screwdriver to finish tightening that off. This piece is no good. Now I need to rotate this around so that I can bring my bar down so I can reinstall that axle shaft. Everything is good up top here now, so we want to put the rotor back on before we put that axle shaft on. And again, this reel was serviced before, but what you want to do, oops, we got to put that uh, little E-clip on, good, good catch there. That E-clip goes back on that post to hold that in place. Sometimes you can do it with uh, hand strength. Sometimes you need a little assist from a, uh, a needle nose pliers or something. We'll take the assist. You would... Um, to rebuild the reel now, what I did earlier was I pulled the shaft, I, I took the anti-reverse dog off, I pulled the shaft, including the spring, I removed these two screws, 
those screws are the hold down for the pinion gear. You pull the pinion gear up, there's a bearing underneath this structure, and that bearing gets oiled, the pinion gear gets lubed, the main gear comes out, you lube both sides of the bearings and the teeth of the main gear, and then, uh, then you can reinstall that assembly. But uh, this isn't a tune-up, this is a uh, little video on how to do that anti-reverse. Okay, we're going to just put the screw back up top here. And then we'll come over and we'll reseat that shaft. So if you can imagine working this thing in reverse, that would be how you're going to take this reel off as we go to reinstall. Nice and snug up on the thing. There are no tie-down nuts here. That little metal cap in the rotor tends to act as a spring washer to, uh, to hold the tie-down. If, uh, if we didn't service this earlier, you would clean this shaft off. There's a light coat of grease on here. It may be hard to see on the, the video itself, but it's there. We're going to look for the flat side. Install through the pinion gear into the slot. And then you want to align the two flat spots for the axle shaft so that you can put that uh, little tie down flat piece. And then we have those two small screws which are always my bane. So use a little tool to align those holes. I use a little pick. And then you got to place one screw in. Okay, and I've gotten the plan B because I always have a little trouble, so I'm just taking some real grease and putting it on the end of a screwdriver so that I can grab it a little bit better. Target it that way. Then we can tighten both down. You can give it a spin, make sure it's working. And that we get a little bit of noise there because of the uh, the case isn't on. Let's put that case back on then. Three side plate screws. Then we'll test the any reverse since that's what it was we were trying to do here. So I showed you a little bit about how to take the case off. I talked you through how to remove the main gear, which is by removing that uh, secondary shaft that belongs to the anti-reverse override. And uh, although we didn't do it, you'll have an idea how it needs to be done. And uh, don't force anything when you do that. If you try to pull that main gear out without uh, removing that shaft, one or the other pieces are going to break. That shaft sometimes gets a little frozen. It's a it's an access point for water here. Uh, so if you find yourself in a situation where it's not moving easily, flood it with a penetrating oil beforehand. Let's give it a test. We're just spinning freely now. You hear that noise went away when we put the case on. Let's make sure we have the anti-reverse. We sure do. All right, let's just put the, the main gear on now. I did service this drag washer earlier. If you do want to service the drag washer, there's a, there's a circular clip that rides in the groove. Pull that off and there's one washer underneath that. Go ahead and put the uh, this adjuster knob on. Let's put the handle on. Give it one more test just to make sure everything spins nicely. And then we're going to get this reel back to Tom. Let him go do some fall fishing. It's almost fall. We can believe that. There you go. Beautiful 4400 SS. Bail trip. And more importantly, we have an anti-reverse again. Let's pull the anti-reverse override. Make sure that we reinstalled that properly. And we have. So Tom, this one's coming back at you. For those of you that have an anti-reverse problem, this is one of the things to check. It's that anti-reverse dog. Again, it uses a friction fork. That friction fork has a gap in it that rides on that uh, anti-reverse ratchet. 
Two things happened with this. This is the less common of the two, which is that a piece actually broke off and couldn't grab it. The other one is that these things get separated. And when they get separated, there's no friction. And to, se to fix that separation, simply a, a pair of uh, needle nose pliers or other things, just lightly crimp it back. Just push a little bit more t torsion back on these things, just by kind of pushing like that. And uh, that will reset the friction on it, and it should be able to uh, restore that function. Tried that already, but I realized as soon as I looked at this that that part was broken off the side here and that it needed to be replaced. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope that solves a problem if you happen to have that problem with the anti-reverse on this one. You saw how to do it. You also saw a little bit about the inside of this reel and how to go about servicing that if uh, that's your primary objective. If you like the video, uh, please indicate that in the section below. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. My channel can always use more subscribers. If you have any comments on this reel or any reel, any questions, please include it in the comments section. I'll try and get back to you with an answer on that. And again, it doesn't have to be on this particular reel, but if you're having trouble with one, let me know and I'll see if I can help you. And finally, if you have a reel to repair, if you have a particular problem with one that you can't overcome, or you don't have the aptitude to do, uh, do the repair and you would like somebody to work on that, well, shoot me a note on my uh, email and I'll be happy to provide you with the repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.